My first diary was a clunky purple thing made of plastic and squeaky hinges and lilac stripes. I knew the TV jingle by heart. Girl tech, so cool and connected. And you bet I felt cool and connected when I spoke and the cover swung open. It had no key, only unlocked the sound of my voice. I spent quiet nights under bed sheets, whispering passwords and writing about my day as if I had secrets to keep locked away. I didn't. There were too many questions that needed answers, too many unsolved mysteries and all the tickling curiosities of second grade. No time for keeping things to myself. My biggest secret was the diary's password, my quiet voice that unlocked blank pages. I learned I had keys in my throat. Dear diary, there are times I think I will run out of questions, like I think I will run out of books to read, but I kept my hand in the air most of the day. My arm is getting very strong. Did you know that John Adams was the second president and that bees pollinate flowers and that my teacher thinks I'm enthusiastic sometimes? I have so many questions. I jingle like a keychain and I just keep finding new ideas to open. I don't Remember when curious became obnoxious and enthusiastic became overpowering, but I remember the sighs and eye rolls. I started sitting on my hands and clenching keys between my teeth, the metallic taste of wondering under my tongue. So many days I left the classroom clinking and heavy with everything unsaid. Dear diary, there's brass in my stomach. I'm beginning to believe I am too much. One day after a class discussion, my teacher pulled me aside. She said I contributed too much. I said I'd do better next time. Doing better meant being quieter. Next time, I counted my contributions, made sure I talked only twice, listened as four boys in my class talked four times each, listened as my teacher praised their enthusiasm. Keys started sliding down into my chest, resting heavy and sharp in my rusted ribcage. Dear diary, girls with voices are forces indeed. I think my teacher has metal in her stomach too. She knows our voices are so easy to dismiss as bossy without ever actually being called boss. She doesn't want me unlocking the same door she did, opening up to rooms full of sighs and eye rolls. Much better, she thinks, to take these keys away from me now. (laughs) But now I have seen too many locks to keep silent. My missing words have left some keyhole in this world empty, and I've been clanking for far too long, so instead, I'm speaking. Keys are falling from my lips after years of rusting away, and I can see how they make everything swing open. And there are blank pages everywhere. 